so now that we talked about temperament and emotional expressions we're going to talk more about how we self-evaluate ourselves and that is through self-esteem and so self-esteem is really our self-evaluation about the disparities between our self-expectations and social expectations and reality and so what we expect from ourselves and what we feel other people expect from us versus what's actually going on will really influence our self-esteem and how we shape our self-esteem and what really impacts our self-esteem also changes as we develop throughout the lifespan. So right away, early on in preschool years, around age three and four, that's really when our self-esteem starts to come online. And their self-esteem at this point is really based on parental approval. If our parents seem to love us and seem to cherish us and tell us we're good kids, we're like, okay, we're good kids, we're awesome. If our parents say we're awesome, we're awesome. If our parents give us a lot of criticism, we might have a lower self-esteem at this point in time. And this is really when things like unconditional positive regard really start to matter. You might be familiar with the idea of unconditional positive regard from Carl Rogers in humanistic psychology. And he really truly believed that we're all born to aspire and to be driven towards love. And when we just want to be who we are and we get love for being who we are, we develop into well-balanced individuals. We get to do the things we like, we get to do the things that bring us joy, and we feel very fulfilled. In comparison at this age, if you have parents that are really critical and only really praise you for certain things, you're going to really bend yourself and twist yourself out of sorts to get their love. And so you want parental approval over and above everything else. And so you're going to be the tree that really bends and twists out of shape. And so he really believed that if your love from your parents was only conditional, if you met certain conditions, you'll become a twisted and distorted tree that later on lots of therapy will have to untwist and unwind. Versus if your parents love you for who you are right from the outset, you're going to grow up like a balanced symmetrical tree where you get to just grow in all your directions and feel like you're thriving no matter what. So early self-esteem tends to be good. Most of us tend to have good parental approval at this age, and we tend to measure self-esteem in three years and four-year-olds, and everybody's at ceiling. If we ask them on a five-point measure or a seven-point measure how they feel about themselves, they pick the highest number, five, seven. And it's very common to see almost everybody say they feel they're the best runner, the best kid at drawing, the best kid at dancing, the best kid at doing everything. We are worried about those three and four-year-olds that don't pick five out of five. The ones that pick a three or a four out of five even though that is objectively good, they feel pretty good about themselves on a five point scale, we're worried about them. And that is because as soon as we start early elementary school, our childhood self-esteem takes a rapid decline. What often happens is as soon as we're exposed in formal education to a lot of same age peers who are different from ourselves, we start to have the cognitive capacity also to compare ourselves to others. And we start to readily compare ourselves and say, oh, hey, I wasn't the first one in this race, or hey, their drawing actually looked better than me, or hey, they listened and had all the right answers in class when I didn't know the right answers. Even if we're not giving them public report cards where they can actually measure who had more answers right, they start to be able to observe what's going on and to compare themselves to other kids. So because of this, around ages five or six, kids start to feel more negative about themselves. Those kids who previously rate them as five out of five on a Likert scale, now are moving towards more of a three. They're starting to have a more realistic version of themselves. They feel like, oh, they're just average. Some kids are better than them, some kids are not, and they're in the middle of the pack. Those kids that previously rated themselves as the three or a four, though, we're definitely extra worried about them because they might move down to the ones or twos on our Likert scale, and they may have a low self-esteem. We tend to see that throughout elementary school, uh, our self-esteem continues to be very vulnerable based on certain situational attributes. We tend to find that most kids between the ages of 7 and 11 judge themselves in lots of different ways, but three very common ways. They tend to be really self-reflective about where they are in terms of social status. Do they have friends? Do they get invited to birthday parties? They tend to be reflective about how they are doing academically. Do they get along with the teacher? Do they have to go stand in the corner a lot or have time out of school? Do they do well on their projects and on their tests? And athletically, how are they at sports? Are they good at running and jumping and catching? Do they get to play games with friends? And are they the winner who scores lots of goals? And so those three different attributes tend to be something we reflect on a lot. You don't have to be good at all three of them, but at least being really good at one of them tends to make us have a pretty positive self-esteem.
Of course, then we hit adolescence and everything gets a lot more complicated. In adolescence, we start to see our self-esteem go in a strong gendered pattern where boys, as they hit puberty, they gain muscle and they gain height and they tend to see a huge boost in their self-esteem. Although boys are later to puberty than girls, they tend to see that nice boost when they get there, when they start shooting up in height. Girls, on the other hand, rather than putting on weight based in muscle, they tend to put on weight based in fat, which is essential and they have to put on the weight in their hips and all their curves and that's typical and healthy. However, it tends to make girls' self-esteem drop a bit. In addition, sometimes girls who reach menarche or start their period a bit younger as compared to their peers, they may also struggle with some self-esteem issues. Once we're into adolescence, we tend to look at lots of different dimensions that help us to reflect more so than we looked at in childhood. But the top ones tend to be things like our appearance. We tend to be frantically obsessed with our appearance. Teenagers walking in front of mirrors is quite comical if you have hidden cameras. They will uh, be slouched and they walk across the mirror and they straighten right up and they're looking in the mirror. It's very common for preteens and teens to spend a lot of time looking in the mirror. It's part of our self-identity and it's a healthy thing. But as long as they are not being overly critical, it's all good. We know a lot of people at this age just start to be very obsessed with any blemishes on their face or any wrinkles or cellulite or anything like that. They're also very preoccupied with things like romance. Now, depending on how old the adolescent is, they may also be obsessed with being in a romantic relationship. And depending on their age, the extent of what that romantic relationship entails will be very different. At early adolescence, that just might mean saying that you have a boyfriend or girlfriend in name only, you don't really go on dates, you don't really do much. Versus in later adolescence, there might be a lot of pressure to explore one's sexuality or, or explore certain experiences within that romantic relationship. We also tend to really evaluate ourselves based on how we're doing in terms of friendship. Do we have a lot of close friends? As well as our overall social status. Are we considered popular? Are we considered cool or uncool? Aside from peers and romantic relationships, we also still consider to reflect on our academics and our athletic abilities. Are we doing well in school? Are we succeeding? Do we think we'll get to college? Are we doing well in sports? Can we do fun extracurriculars with our body? Overall, adolescence tends to be a time when our self-esteem is most volatile and we're most worried. There's a lot of stuff going on in terms of our hormones that can really make our self-esteem become rocky, especially when a child is starting to menstruate and the menstruation cycle is making things like our estrogen and progesterone really fluctuate. It can really make us feel more emotional, more reactive to what's going on situationally in our life. Eventually though, this hopefully balances out and we make it to adulthood. And in adulthood, our self-esteem becomes more stable, whether it's positive or negative, it tends to become more stable. And we tend to focus on things that we did focus on earlier on in life, like our appearance and our friendships. But we also see four new things really move up. And four things that are new to us in terms of uh, influencing our adult self-esteem are marriage and relationships. There's a lot of pressure for us to settle down, whether that might be defined in lots of different ways, whether it's a heteronormative marriage or whether it's just getting roommates in a nice condo in downtown Toronto or whatever that is, getting your situation settled in is hugely is a huge part of the pressure on us in adulthood. Finding those people you're gonna have sustaining relationships with, whether it's a spouse or if it's kids or if it's enduring friendships. Making sure we're financially settled is also a big part of adulthood. And making sure that you have money in your wallet and money in the bank can really influence one's self-esteem in adulthood. Versus if you're in debt or you have bill collectors calling you, that really may um, detriment your self-esteem. We also have just the general status. How are you doing? What kind of house do you have? Do you have a prestigious job? Are you out of college? Are you promoted at work? There's lots of different ways we may measure one's status in adulthood, whether it's by how many kids you have or how many promotions you've received or how many countries you've traveled to. But we tend to think about all these different components of status or check marks or bucket lists in adulthood. And finally, we also start to consider our health. This is something that we may have considered in adolescence and in childhood, but it was more so, are we in the hospital or not? And in adulthood, we start to worry about our risk for cardiovascular disease or diabetes or other components of our health. And so getting to the gym, not necessarily to look great, but to be able to continue mobility and be able to keep moving becomes more important in our adulthood. So self-esteem is something that changes over the lifespan and it changes in reflection to our developmental time as well as situationally what's happening in our life. It tends to start off very high, dip down when we start elementary and really become more volatile in adolescence before it stables out in adulthood.